On Saturday, we got a star-studded MLB doubleheader for you. First, Aaron Judge leading the Yankees against Mookie Betts and the Red Sox. Then, Mike Trout and the Angels take on Francisco Lindor and the Indians. It all starts at 12.30 p.m. Eastern, 9.30 a.m. Pacific on FS1 and the Fox Sports app. Back here with Coach Mangini, we're going viral. Check this out. Odell catching passes from a jugs machine barehanded with one hand. Reportedly caught 67 of these in a row. In my opinion, he's very close to the machine, but I am also not a professional football player, so. Chris, once upon a time, was a jugs machine spokesman. Might still be, I'm not quite certain. Yeah, yeah, I still got the connection. The, as you would say, the best way to train yourself catching footballs. 67 in a row, one-handed after after training camp practice. No uh, gloves. I mean, that's, no, this was, that's part what of his job. To do. Yeah, and he didn't catch 67 in a row because I saw him just drop one right there. I wouldn't catch him frontal as much because the ball typically is not coming right at your face, man. I like to go on the side, over the shoulder. But he knows what he's doing. He, 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 I, we, we've talked about these things. Nice. I mean, that's exciting. I had, they're probably going to win the Super Bowl. <laughs> <laughs> What? Yeah, the rest of the league, you see them packing up there in the background. Yeah, I mean, that's I mean, it. that's good. To put, hey, coach, you can't be down on extra work after practice. You can't be so down on... How does it become a viral clip? I like extra work that people he do didn't, he didn't privately do it. because they're working really hard. And, yeah, but like, coach, he oh, didn't put it out let's there. Let's on the jug machine. Someone on the Browns put it out there. Okay. It's not him. Hey, look, I'm excited about it. Coach is like, great. you didn't tell him? He got this green room yeah, five minutes. Right, yeah, man, there's right. some guys can't win for losing. Right, you're not. even wearing your Browns color tie, too. I, it's, well, I saw the clipper before. I, <laughs> <laughs> Stars to start your board. morning, sponsored by Gillette Clear Gel. Here we go. We start with some terrible news for the Cincinnati Bengals. A.J. Green was carted off the field in training camp. He's now out six to eight weeks with torn ligaments in his ankle, making him unlikely to be on the field week one for Cincinnati. See, what was your reaction when you heard the news? Uh, one of the most underrated wide receivers that we've had in the league the last eight years, and he started off, man, him and Julio Jones, stat for stat. First seven years, last two years, A.J. Green's gotten hurt, and you're talking about a stable voice, a stable personality, one of the low-maintenance wide receivers you'll ever have in the NFL. This is a, this is a big injury injury for them. I believe he's going to miss probably the first month of the season. And that might be the most competitive division in football with the defending champion AFC North Ravens, defending AFC North champion Ravens, the Steelers who expect to bounce back, and Coach Mangini's Cleveland Browns. To not have the best player on your team for the first month of the year is brutal. Yeah, it, it's just devastating for a new head coach, and, and you really want to see what they can do offensively. And it's just so hard to overcome. Giants also got some bad news. Golden Tate suspended for four games after testing positive for using a fertility drug. They've also already lost Corey Coleman for the season to a torn ACL. And Sterling Shepard has a fractured finger. If only the Giants had another top receiver to rely on, but they don't. Coach, what do you make of what's going on with the Giants? Well, this is one of those uh, excuses that actually seem viable to me. I, I mean, I don't mm -hmm. know a lot about... The, the fertility drugs, but it actually seemed like like this could be one of those mistakes and was a legitimate mistake. I'm, I'm curious to see where this goes. Well, the, we've had other, we've had at least one other player, I think two other players, fail a test for the same reason. And the NFL, it's like, hey, that stinks, but you still got to serve those four games. So Golden Tate almost assuredly is going to miss these four games. And for the Giants, it means they've got Evan Ingram and question marks at wide receiver after in, in a year where they're either going to be starting a rookie or trying to prop up Eli, they all of a sudden have a wide receiving group that for the first month of the season will be the most bereft of talent of any in the league. Yeah, I'm all about fulfilling God's commission, be fruitful and multiply. <laughs> but a couple guys have already got dinged with the fertility thing. Listen, if I'm having an issue or something, I can't, deal, I can't give you no baby until I'm out the league. I, can, I told my wife, we can't, we can't do this. I can't, I can't jeopardize. Man, he lost a couple million dollars yeah. there. That's a lot of money. It's a lot of money. Yeah. Jim, and them money. kids are going to cost you more money. Exactly. Man, that's, bad. that's a bad deal. They're beat. real expensive. I can't. I, can't. <laughs> I have no words. I have no words except more football words. Uh, good news for Bobby Wagner. <laughs> He signed a three-year, $54 million extension with the Seahawks yep, this week, and he doesn't need happening. fertility drugs. No. Nope. Uh, with over $40 million guaranteed, making him the highest-paid inside linebacker in football. See, put this into perspective, just how good 
is Wagner. I believe Bobby Wagner for a long period of time was the best defender that they had. Yes, even when they had Earl, even when they had Sherm, Cam Chancellor, they got all the news, but Bobby Chancellor, Bobby was the stabilizing force. You cannot throw the ball intermediate or short against him. He is so quick on his reads. His diagnosis in the running game, you have not been able to run the ball on Seattle since he's been there. That's the best compliment you can give an inside linebacker. I was really impressed that he did his own contract, and one of the main reasons was he wanted the organization to have to tell him the negative things yeah. they felt about him, quote. Which, which makes it it's really hard to sit across from the player and say, well, you're not as good as this guy, or you failed at this, and then have to go back out and have him lead your team. I thought that was a really interesting uh, take that or a way that he went and it paid off and he got a great contract and it's he got, great. and he doesn't have to be commissioned Fantastic. right and he got he got the great contract for himself but also for the team in this regard because it's only a three-year deal if he if his play does fall off they're not committed to him long term all right let's finish up with ezekiel elliott he did not show up to camp on friday continued to hold out throughout the weekend According to reports, he has yet to counter the Cowboys' extension offer. Could be a long battle between the two sides. Coach Mangini, is Zeke handling this the right way? Is there a right way? Yeah, there, there really isn't a great way to handle a holdout. But I actually understand where he's coming from. They, they're talking about... Whoa, cool. I, I know. Hey. Well, he, he, here, <laughs> from, from a business perspective, you've got Dak and Amari, who are about to get paid. So he could be very easily coming back next season. And they're saying, well, look, we spent all that money on Dak and we spent all that money on Amari. We don't really have as much money for you. So by inserting himself into these two contracts, now they've got to take that pot of money and, and divvy it up equally or divvy up however they see those three players and I think that's a smart play by him and to do it at this point with all the praise that's been heaped on him with with uh, what he stirs the the, 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 the drink, straw that the stirs straw the, the drink when you when you start praising a player like that then you better pay him like I mean that's a platinum straw or I don't mm -hmm. even know what what metal that right. would be first of all I really want to give you a hug right now. I'm so glad this is your, well, this is what yeah, you well, said. Don't do that. Boundaries. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I am, and, and while I agree with you nearly entirely, and I think the Cowboys put themselves, they backed themselves into this corner. Stephen Jones talked about, and Jerry talked about paying Dak. They all talked about paying Amari. And then Stephen Jones in May said two very interesting things about paying Zeke. One was, the exact quote is, obviously, it starts at what Todd Gurley got and goes from there. Well, I mean, that's just handing not a blank check, but a four-year, $58 million with $45 million guaranteed check to, and saying it starts from there. But the other thing he said was, but we've got a couple years to get this done. I'm sure Zeke heard that and said, wait, a couple, couple years? You're talking about taking care of all these other guys. I've been the best player on your team. And while Chris is adamant, and I totally agree, that it is not Zeke's responsibility to worry about other guys getting paid, I am curious as a coach if you'd be concerned about how this could play in the locker room when Zeke, while we can argue he's been underpaid, he's paid like a top five pick. Dak, who's been the quarterback, who's never missed a game, never been in trouble, has been paid like a fourth round pick, which is a million bucks a year thereabouts. And Zeke almost trying to cut the line in this regard. I, I think it's totally justifiable on Zeke's end, but would you worry about how the locker room, most notably Dak and Amari, are going to react to Zeke not being there when they are there? Well, I, I understand what you're saying, but th those contracts are in the works, and his contract was not in the works. So he, and, and I'm sure he approached him and said, this is something I want to do. They said, you're probably going to have to wait, and, and he took a stand. And look, that's, I, I get where he's coming from, from a business perspective. Now, I wonder if he's going to take a step back and say, okay, I was suspended for those games. I did have the other issue this, this offseason that didn't really go anywhere, but there's been some, some mm -hmm. things along those lines, and it is early. Is, is he going to take some discount because of those behaviors? And typically, the answer is no to that. How long do you think this will play out for? Do you think this would bleed into the regular season? I don't think so. I, I think the Cowboys understand how important he is. I mean, Amari's great and, and, and Dak's great. He's and He's the focal point of this offense. Yeah, it, it, he is the straw that, that stirs the drink. They were right on with, with saying that. So they're going to have to get him in and, and figure out a way to make this work. And he's the best player on the team. This is what the players respect in the locker room. Who's the best? 
All right? You don't think, oh, oh, man, did this guy get in trouble? Oh, did this guy, he get a traffic ticket? Man, we don't care. We don't care. Man, who can play the game of football? Who going to make the Dallas Cowboys better? When you get in that locker room, that's what becomes important. All that, ah, uh, I was drafted in the fourth round. Well, that's your problem. That ain't no one else's problem. There's all kinds of stories. You imagine me telling Johnny Randall, hey, Johnny, you were a street free agent. You know something? Hey, buddy, that's tough luck. Man, Johnny Randall was out there getting his. I played with seven Hall of Famers. You think we didn't have times where they was trying to get their money? You think that they didn't think that they were the best in the business? That's all a part of it. The one thing that people miss, fans, it's all the players against management. It ain't some of the players. And when management starts talking good about the players, the other players are like, okay, they didn't say that about me. Zeke should be concerned. Dak is going to get paid. That's a guarantee. Amari Cooper, because they traded for him in the impact on Dak, He's going to get paid. That's a guarantee. So now how much of the pie do I have left? Zeke is a fool if he starts playing for the money he's playing for, where he wouldn't get any new money to, for three seasons. Man, you know, I mean, that's a lifetime in the NFL. We saw Todd Gurley. We saw L. Bell. Look at how their fortunes have changed over the last three years. We want Zeke to wait three years till he gets paid. That's not going to happen. Also, look what the Cowboys look like without Ezekiel Elliott. It's not like they've got really depth at that position. Talk about what would happen if he did hold out, what the, where this team could go without him on it. Well, I think that's the interesting thing about the conversation because when Amari got there, the offense did get better, mm -hmm. and it helped Dak, and, and Dak has done some good things. But it, but it all centers around everybody's trying to stop Zeke. And and when, when you're loading up the box, when everything is focused on stopping that one player, it opens up an incredible amount of things for the other guys, mm -hmm. for the tight end, for the wide receivers. When you take him out of that mix, and now they can focus on Amari, or they can focus on dealing with, with Dak exclusively, then, then it's, a, it's a much harder road to go for the offense. I know, Coach, when we had all those effective offenses in Minnesota, and it was generated by the wide receivers. Jake Reed and myself, 1,000-yard seasons, four seasons in a row. Then we get Randy Moss. When the quarterback would come to negotiate, they would tell him, it's our wideouts. And our wideouts, Jake got paid, Moss got paid, and I got paid. It was about who was the absolute best. And in Dallas, Ezekiel Elliott is the best, not offensive player, he's the best football player. He's the best, and when that star goes out there, when all those players run out there, Ezekiel Elliott is the best. And that locker room, they know that. They know when he's on the team, we got a better chance. So I don't think that Zeke holding out is going to reflect on the locker room in a negative way. And maybe most importantly, it's not just that the Cowboys know that, to Coach's point, the opposition knows it. And the opposition, every game they play against Dallas, the first thing in the meetings is how are we going to slow down 21, and they go from there. And if all of a sudden he's not out there, as we saw for six weeks a couple years ago in the first three games, the Cowboys went 0-3 and scored seven points per game in that first stretch. Mm -hmm. If it becomes, oh, Zeke's not out there, we can focus, on, we can drop an extra man into coverage. We can focus on stopping what is a relatively pedestrian aerial attack. Same thing they did to Jared Goff. Yeah, then all of a sudden the <laughs> offense grinds to a halt when the defense isn't focused on, because he's so good they can focus on stopping him, and he still wins a rushing title. And, 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 and look, you've got a first-time offensive coordinator. You need to help him out, and helping mm -hmm. him out is having an elite running back in the backfield. You've got a head coach who, who's getting close to the end of his contract. Yep, There's a year. lot of pressure on him to, to, to perform as well. So to go into the season without your, like Chris said, the best player on your team, it, it's it's a hard hard thing to do. And, and he's really got the leverage over the Cowboys at this point. All right, Coach, stick around. Another segment coming up. Why is this a unique challenge this coming season for Tom Brady? We'll explain next on First Things First. Coach, I'm telling you, I got a feeling.